Welcome to the Catholic View for Women, a show where we give you news and views from a truly Catholic perspective. I'm Teresa Tamio, a co-host of this program, along with Astra Bene Gutierrez from Hispanics for Life and Janet Randa from Defending Life right here on EWTN, as well as Priests for Life and Silent No More Awareness Campaign. I host a daily radio show co-produced by EWTN and Ave Maria Radio called Catholic Connection. So I hope you watch us and also tune in to EWTN Radio. I love the topic we're going to discuss today, God in your pocket. What do we mean by that? Well, Pope Francis has been encouraging us to take God, God with, with us, us everywhere we go. And mm -hmm. that's really what we mean when we talk about having this personal encounter with Christ, that he should be with us in every aspect of our daily lives. So God in your pocket. Right. Well, you know, uh, one time the spiritual direction, uh, uh, one of the priests had said to me that the easiest thing to do is you're laying in bed, you open your eyes before you even step off the bed. Say good morning to Jesus. Just a simple thing. Good morning, Lord. Thank you for another day. I'm alive. My eyes are open and help me throughout the day. Brief, quick, and then get up and start whatever you have to do. But that quick acknowledging the Lord before you even spring off the bed is also a good way to start the day. It mm -hmm. also keeps you, I think it centers you and it keeps you focused, right? That you right. know that God is in charge and you are directing and ordering your life always toward him. That's right. Yes. And with so many things competing for your attention, you know, when you get up in the morning and there's the phone, there's just TV, radio, all this. You can have him so close to you. Like, for example, something that really orders my own life is the Magnificat. Oh, yeah. I have the yep. morning That's prayer. I've got day. the gospel. Yep. I've got uh, the mass readings. I've got the a saint of the day. Exactly. Right. So much there, too. And also the artwork. It's beautiful. It's like it, trans right. it transports you. So um, there are very tangible, practical ways to keep God at the center of your life in very simple ways, but mm -hmm. very tangible. I think it's a really important thing. Yeah. And, you know, nowadays, I'm sure you do this, Asha, because you're into tech. You can have these things di downloaded on your iPad. Oh or your phone, so yes. you don't even have to grab the book, where's that book, or even your Bible. You can have that all those apps the on your app. phone, mm -hmm. and you can just take it wherever you are, or you could be still laying in bed and have your, because most people keep their phone right by their bed, because <laughs> they use it as their alarm clock. I know my alarm clock broke, I didn't buy a new one, I got my phone. But now if you have that app on your phone, you can just hit that app and you can start, like you just said, the prayers from the minute of God. Or you can even download the whole breviary, and mm -hmm. uh, there's many people who do, do the daily office. Rosaries, you can hear the rosary. Everything. Okay, there's a yes. Pope app. Pope Francis has his own I app. Have it, I have yep. that, and mm -hmm. you can see what's, what's, what's the Pope doing today. You know, he hit the Pope app. It's kind of fun. To do. All these ways are ways to really carry God with us, and the Pope has done a great job of illustrating this. Uh, this year, I think at least twice now, maybe even more than that, he's actually distributed many New Testaments, and he had this done by the homeless people in St. Peter's during after the Sunday Angelus, and he gave them a mini. He handed out something like, I don't know how many thousands of copies of the New Testament, and I actually saw it when I was over in Italy this year. It was in Italian, but they were about this big. Lit literally got in your pocket, could fit right in, the, in, in a soup pocket, about this big, and it's the, um, the New Testament, and wow. how perfect to carry God with, with you. you. And he's always yeah. talking about reading scripture every yeah. single day. You know, Teresa actually, you know, she was uh, religious and she didn't carry a lot, you know, she was very simple, but she did carry uh, the gospel with her, mm -hmm. the gospel of Matthew. So how important was it to her life? And you look at the saints like her um, to follow their example about Absolutely. what's most important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I know, Teresa, you love everything Pope Francis has said about this. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, uh, let me just read one of the quotes uh, that go along with this theme. God's relationship to his people comes before all of us. It comes from that time and thus in this sense, our thoughts go first with gratitude to those who have gone before us and who welcomed us into the church. No one becomes a Christian by himself. Is that clear? Nobody becomes a Christian by himself. Christians are not made in a lab. Christians are part of a people that has come a long way. Christians belong to a people called the church, and the church makes us Christians on the day of our baptism. Of course, then comes the catechesis and so many other things, but no one. No one becomes a Christian by himself. And I think the encouragement from Pope Francis is a reminder for us to encourage others to carry God with them. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and we, this society we're in, like we just said with the iPhones and all this mm -hmm. stuff, we are bombarded with noise, so to speak, uh, in our lives. And we really need to um, take time, be quiet, be still, and listen to the Lord. And I know, Teresa, when I was out visiting with you uh, in Michigan, uh, we had the wonderful opportunity to talk to your pastor, Monsignor Bruguerin. Right, my spiritual director. And your yeah. spiritual mm -hmm. director. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is a gem and a jewel, and I'm so jealous that you have such a great spiritual director right there in your pocket. Uh, but Monsignor was very gracious, and we, we told him about this topic, and he said, all right, I'll sit down and chat with you a little bit about this. So let's see what Monsignor had to say. 
I think one of the most important things about developing a personal relationship with Jesus is you've got to take time to be with him. Like you are with any friend, it requires time. The problem is, in today's world, everything is so busy. People are constantly going here, there, going to work, going to, the, you know, taking care of the kids, going here, there, and everywhere. Are you taking the time to be quiet? Are you taking the time to be silent? Are you taking the time to listen to the voice of God who's calling you? I often like to say, you know, how many times does God, you know, shout down from heaven? Would you just be quiet down there so I could talk to you? We have to listen. And I, I think of, like, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Talk about a powerful listener. You think of the solemnity of the Annunciation, you know. How was she disposed to be able to say yes to God? It's because she took the time to listen. So I think we have to get into a deeper understanding of what it means to listen to God's voice, to listen to him every day. You know, find a, you know, 15, 20 minutes. I always like to tell people, is, well, I can't do a holy hour. Well, if you can't do a holy hour, do a holy half hour. If you can't do a holy half hour, do a holy 15 minutes. Give God something. And give him to that consistently each and every day. I look at a holy hour, and I look at my own personal prayer time. Uh, you know, it's a mixed conglomeration of all kinds of things. Uh, sometimes it's reading, sometimes it's rosary, sometimes it's, you know, listening to holy music. Uh, I always tell people, I walk around school and always ask the kids, you know, what are you listening to on your iPad, you know, your iPhone? And, oh, Father, you don't want to be listening to this stuff. Well, even in the music that we listen to, and I think music can lead us into deeper sense of prayer, and I, I listen to all my holy music, as I like to say, and that leads me into prayer. When I'm opening up the church in the morning or something like that, you know, I'm always listening to music or I'm singing or something. Again, what drives you into a deeper relationship? And you got to go on what your feelings are each day. You know, maybe today it is reading. Maybe it is a, a holy hour. Maybe it is spiritual direction. Maybe it is uh, praying the rosary, the Divine Mercy Chaplet. You have to have, I always like to say, you know, uh, you have to have a set of things in your, your toolkit. And what are those things in your toolkit? And have you taken the time to identify all those things that are important to you to deepen your relationship with God? You know, I'm very big into Lexio Divina. I love Lexio Divina prayer. But that takes time to be silent and still. Then I always get couples who say, well, you know, I've got four or five kids. I've got two kids. I don't have time to do all that stuff. What do I do? Well, the reality is, once the kids go to bed, you and your spouse could be praying. You could take the time to you know, uh, spend time looking at the readings for the following weekend. You could take the time to look at, oh, look at all those devotional books that are out there, all those apps that are on, you know, uh, out there for you. Uh, one of the bishops of New Zealand, I saw on a little uh, Twitter feed not too long ago, encourages people, you know, during the Lenten season, you know, have an appy Lent. You know, what are the apps that are important to you? What's going to drive you into a deeper relationship? But you have to take the time. You have to be committed to that time. I love that. Have an appy lens. An appy lens. That's what we were talking about. Yeah. All the apps that are out there, like we said, the Breviary, the Magnificat, all these different things, You and the Pope app. There's so much now that you can download and have at your fingertips. There's even an app we? now that you can get on your phone for Catholic Radio, and you can also, there's a phone number that, that we have at Ave Maria Radio that you can dial and listen to us on the phone automatically. So when we talk about the media and we talk about, oh, and there's the EWTN app too, our producer just Absolutely. reminded us um, of that. Right. We talk about the media and we talk about the fact that a lot of it is negative, but the church teaches us that the media in of itself is not an intrinsic yeah. evil. It's what no. some people do with it. It's so an it's, a, it's an instrument. Mm -hmm. And I think the church has come a long way because mm -hmm. the Vatican's website is fabulous now. And we have Vatican.va, uh, which is the overall website, which I think is much easier to navigate. We have news.va, we have ewtnnews.com. So these are really great resources to help you carry God in your pocket. Where That's there's right. a will, there's a way. Where there's love, yeah. you'll, find, you'll find a way right. mm -hmm. and be creative. And at first, you know, having a discipline of looking at something like Monsignor was saying, It'll be a little difficult, but as you do it and you cooperate with God's grace and, and doing His will, uh, you'll fall in love and it'll become easier. It'll become easier. You'll grow and be more creative about finding those spaces to be with God. There's a wonderful prayer by uh, a Jesuit priest, Father Urube, talking about love changes everything mm -hmm. and, and what you love, it, it, it determines your life. It determines how you act, what you read, what you watch. You know, where you go, you know, with whom you, you, you're in contact. So if you think about that, if you're in love with the Lord, 
then you are going to carry him in your pocket. You're going to take him everywhere with you because he's going to direct or should be directing every step of your life. Right. Well, another way I find uh, to take God with you is what the music you play in your car. Uh, in the morning, you know, I have about a half hour ride to the Priest for Life office on Staten Island from where I live in New Jersey. And I have beautiful praise and worship music that I, that's like a part of my prayer. Well, it in the calms morning. you down and it, it does. centers you. It does. Mm -hmm. As you know. opposed to listening, and, and I have to be informed because, um, you know, we're all you know, we're out there on the, on the front lines and I do a radio show every day, so I have to, to read and, and, and take in a lot of information. But I also find that that type of music helps me just to just calm down, calm. take a deep yes. breath, and get focused. No, again. And, and LA, we have long commutes too, and basically, but your car can be a little chapel where you have the rosary on 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 CD, on the CD that you can get right. on the ca religious catalog. I mean, you can really make, find the time and you can. create the spaces. Yeah, I remember one thing Monsignor told me he does is he has his iPod with all his religious music and chants. And He's a real techie, he likes. Monsignor. He's Bugari. very techie. very very knowledgeable. And he told me that he puts it on in the morning as he leaves the rectory and he gets over to open up the church and he's listening like as he's walking to to the music and speaking of walking there's so many people that go for a morning jog or a morning mm -hmm. walk or you go to the gym instead of letting the more secular junk you know occupy your mind and your space you can have that iPod with these things downloaded and take spend even more time with the Lord and and it does like you said Teresa it calms you down it'll make your exercise period go even better on that treadmill you won't feel bored you'll stay on the treadmill longer because you'll be listening to the Lord I mean there's a lot a lot of things we can do to stay focused on God and mo many of our viewers may not know Monsignor, people in the Archdiocese of Detroit, maybe uh, in Washington because he served uh, at the uh, Basilica of the right. Immaculate Conception for, for many years working at the John Paul II Center. But he's a perfect example of how this works because not only is he a pastor of one of the largest parishes in the Archdiocese of Detroit, but he's a canon lawyer and he is um, v very much on the top in the Archdiocese. He has a very important position, so he's, he's dealing with a lot of important cases as a canon lawyer that come before him. And he is involved in many, many projects. And, and Dominic and I, in many ways, are in awe of him because Dominic says he never he never seems rattled. He's always just... He's always calm. He's always he's calm. Always and he always calm. tells me, as my spiritual director, T, all things Christ, all things Christ. And, and this is kind of the focus of this whole show, all things Christ, when the idea mm -hmm. of carrying God with you to keep you centered and to keep you focused. Yeah, and it, it really keeps more of the, the bad things away from you. <laughs> because right. if, you're, if, you're, if you're listening to good sacred music or if you're listening to the prayers and doing these kind of things, then all the, the evil one is always looking for that little moment to creep in. And to get you upset. And get you upset. throw you off balance. Throw you off balance. But if you're, you have these other things happening, then it keeps him away further. Yeah, and your heart is full of positive things and you know, centered on right. the Lord. It's, it's hard to penetrate that once you've already centered yourself. Right, and it's God. not about living in la-la land and not paying attention to no, things that need not. to be done and issues that need to be addressed, but it is about remembering that, that God is, as I like to say, still very large and very much in charge. That's All right, right, we have to take a break. When we come back, more on carrying God in your pocket every single day. We'll be right back. So how are you doing in that personal relationship with Christ? Are you carrying God in your pocket, in your purse, in your backpack, in your book bag, or in your pocketbook, as Janet would say? Welcome back, Catholic View for Women. I'm Teresa Tamio, along with Astrid Bene Gutierrez and Janet Rana, and we are talking about carrying God with you in the everyday. That's right. And of course, Teresa, you have written a new book uh, called Walk Softly and Carry a Great Bag. Don't and you love the way it matches our set? That's right. I just realized Perfect. that the colors were color First coordinated. Of all, I, I love the cover. I, I told this Beautiful. to Father Frank from the minute I first saw it. I said, Father, I just love it because there's something about it that it's like you want to pick it up. You, you just want to touch the book. Uh, and of course, I was with Teresa. We did a book signing out in Michigan at Chico's, no less, mm -hmm. one of our favorite <laughs> stores to shop. And um, it was great watching the women come in, shopping for clothes, and getting a great little devotional. I mean, it's wonderful. I take it with me on the airplane. I put it in a little airplane pocket right there in the yep. in front of me in the seat pocket, and I have it there to reflect on while I'm flying. I mean, it's a great, great, great little book. And what I like is that each little vignette is just about a page and a half, uh, two pages, mm -hmm. quick bite-size. Bite-size. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I, I, I'm sorry, Teresa, but I just love 
the, uh, the titles, the titles <laughs> are, are to me like I'm just because I, I hear your voice. See, the problem is I think when I read this book, I hear your voice. Whispering well, Elena in my Rodriguez ear. said that to me. Our friend mm -hmm. Elena, yeah. of course, from mm -hmm. from EW Chan Television and right. Radio. She said, "T, I feel like you're in my head," and I wrote it like that. I mean, mm -hmm. I write, and that's how I write. That's how I speak. So I wanted to be very conversational. But um, why don't you start, Teresa, by um, uh, you know just tell us uh, about the first really how it opens up. God is in the details. Right, and, and what I Instead did. Instead of course, Teresa, the devil, devil is, is in the, the details. details. And what I actually did to make it very practical for people is make it you know bite size in the size and, and in the chapters as as we just explained. But I came up with the idea of taking fun cliches or phrases and putting a little bit of a twist on it. So each chapter has um, a verse from scripture and has a little prayer and also has a, a funny um, introduction based on a, on a popular saying, such as the cover, walk softly and carry a great bag versus walk softly and carry, carry a, big a big stick. stick. Right. That so let's see, we have, they little. fought the Lord and the Lord won. Don't cry over spilled perfume. Necessity is the mother of the microwave. <laughs> walk a mile in her Jimmy Choo's. Bling it on, you are what you tweet, blood, sweat, and years, all sunshine makes a desert and very dry skin. When life gives you lemons, make limoncello. So you get the idea. It's based on, on fun phrases, a little bit of a twist. But God is in the details, and this gets back to the original discussion that we're having here, carrying God in your pocket. Once you have that relationship with Christ, and once you're greeting him in the morning, as Janet said, and, and mm -hmm. Astrid, as you said, reading the Magnificat, and, and being involved in a relationship with Christ and having that, he is with you everywhere. Right. And you can see him in the details. Everything is, is ordered around you know, the Lord and you begin seeing things much differently. So just let me read quickly because it's a very, um, very, very quick, all the chapters are pretty quick. This is based on the verse in Matthew mm -hmm. 28, 20. And surely I am with you always until the end of the age. It really gets my Italian up when I hear people say the devil is in the details. Actually, it's God who's in the details. He wants to be with us in every area of our lives. The big stuff, the small stuff, the good stuff, the good, bad, and the ugly, so to speak, right in the midst of our hectic, everyday lives. You will find that by taking a moment to pray to him, to think about him and how much he loves you, he will reveal himself to you. He will acknowledge you acknowledging him and in some pretty unexpected ways. We serve a very detailed God. Each of us, however, has to be open. Let me give you one lovely example of how the Lord is indeed right there with us every day as we go about our business. My husband and I were busy getting our backyard and patio ready for the coming, sum uh, coming summer season. It was a Saturday afternoon, and the nursery was the last door on the shopping agenda that day. My husband is the one with the green thumb. So when we visit the home and garden type stores, he takes off with his list, and I tend to wander around just looking at all the lovely plants and flowers. That's exactly what I was doing when I had my God moment. Now, I can barely tell a petunia from a peony, but I do know beauty when I see it. This particular day, browsing in that nursery in suburban Detroit, I was simply stunned at God's glory. There are just so many different varieties of plant life and so many different shapes and sizes. The vibrant colors alone took my breath away. And then suddenly, I heard a Catholic hymn, a Catholic hymn playing overhead. Background music in shops and malls is pretty commonplace, right? We all know that. But Schubert's Ave Maria? Even the most skeptical among us would have to find that selection at least interesting. For Catholic Christian, this hymn carries a very particular significance because of the Blessed Mother and her association with flowers, in particular, roses. As the hymn played, I happened to be standing in the middle of two aisles filled with yellow, pink, and white rose bushes, along with the kaleidoscope of other fragrant flowers. I immediately felt a tug on my heart, which skipped a few beats. I truly felt this was God's way of acknowledging my praises. So remember, God is in the details. Carrying God in your pocket. That's yes. right. And of course, the prayer there, Teresa, at the end is, as I go about my daily routine, Lord, please open my eyes and my heart to see your glory. Remind me that you are in every detail of our lives, no matter how small, ordinary. Amen. And that, and that, that's, the, I think, what's so nice about this devotional is it's an easy read and it kind of reminds you, like, I go to the nursery too, you know, in the spring and get the flowers, but again, I, I never thought about that, like you just said, Teresa, like, look at God's creation, how many varieties and look at the beauty we have and, and, and that it all comes anew every spring. It's, it's new mm -hmm. again every spring. And so we should 
take time more and appreciate God in, in these little steps of our lives. Mm -hmm. And you are aware of the mm -hmm. details that he, he loves us. He communicates his love through so many things, through people's kindness, through uh, creation. Uh, he is so good. And then once you start to be awakened to that and his goodness, everything around you communicates. It changes. Your, your special... whole perspective changes. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. You know what I like too, Teresa? I mean, the book provides for me very also practical advice. I like uh, the little uh, part where you have sticks and stones may break my bones and emails can really hurt me. And of course, the scripture quote is, if anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his heart, this man's religion is vain. And as you know, with the media that we're in right now between Facebook and emails, this is what this, this little uh, reflection is getting to. Mm -hmm. So many family relationships are uh, affected because of what happens Well, not on, just on family Facebook. relationships, friendships, working relationships, the comments people make on Facebook. People can hide. We're just mentioning how the media can be used wisely and well, but people can also misuse it and hide behind it. They, they, they will say things on Facebook or in an email, mm -hmm. even in a tweet that they would never say to someone in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we forget there's somebody actually, a person with dignity made right. in the image of God behind that other computer that we have to be sensitive to their feelings. And sometimes we, we forget that they are really are people, mm -hmm. sensitive hearts. And then I like your holiday advice. You know, the one that you say, uh, instead of it's the most wonderful time of the year, it's the most miserable, miserable time, time of, of the year. year. And yeah. I, I think that reflects on a personal experience you had. Yeah. I remember living through this with you, but tell yeah, us about I, it. I had all these plans for, for Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, um, it was Thanksgiving Day weekend, and we, it, Thanksgiving was over. And Thanksgiving is when we start to decorate the house for Christmas. And right. so we had, it was a nice day. It was a Saturday after Thanksgiving, and we had everything planned, and Dominic was going to decorate the outside. I started on the inside. and then. When we got all of that done, we we're going to start making some Italian cookies for Christmas. Well, you know, if you want to make God laugh, make plans. <laughs> so Dom is outside putting up the lights, and all of a sudden, like within five minutes, he comes in, and he's got leaves in his hair, and he's holding his right arm, and he's like, honey, I think we have to go to the hospital. He was climbing up the ladder to decorate the tree, and he slipped and fell and fell onto the cement driveway. Thank God he didn't hit his head. His arm braced his fall, but he shattered his right That's list. Right. Yeah. All of a sudden, all of our holiday plans, we were going to do this, we were going to do that, we are going to blah, 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 blah. But you know what it was? It was the most peaceful advent mm -hmm. because we had to just slow down, be still. Right. Be still. And we spent much of the holidays in front of the fireplace with a nice glass of wine, listening to Christmas music. And I remember that as one of the most peaceful holiday seasons we ever had. Right. Yeah, but how easy it could have been the worst nightmare right. to think <laughs> everything's ruined, our plans are ruined, and, and when you have God at the center of your life, you know, you keep that deep peace yeah. that keeps you the perspective, and God has something else in mind yep. for us. And sure yep. enough, how beautiful that you got to spend a very peaceful, I'm sure more prayerful time with, with God, with your husband, yeah. healing. All right, now I have to ask one more question, Teresa. <laughs> what does Jimmy Choose have to do with devotion? Huh? Well, walk a mile <laughs> how, how in her shoes. Into that? <laughs> walk a mile in her shoes, walk a mile in his shoes, walk a mile in my Jimmy Choose. Well, because, you know, I, you know I, I, I'm a fashionista, right? Of and course. I enjoy, you know, I enjoy clothes. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as it's all in balance. Right. And so giving people that idea of um, not judging someone, and so that's where I, I, I took the little phrase. Instead of just walk a mile in her shoes, well, why not design her shoes, Jimmy Choose? Jimmy so, just having fun with the same, oh, okay. but drawing right. from real life. Exactly. Because I think sometimes we have um, not done ourselves a whole heck of a lot of good because we put out sometimes a bad image. We mm -hmm. sometimes appear overly pious. Um, we sometimes, I think there's got a, a wrong message has gotten out that in order to be a good, solid Christian woman, whether that's a Catholic woman or a Protestant woman, that we have to, you know, walk around in sackcloth and ashes. Um, I don't believe that. I think as public people, especially for us, mm -hmm. um, it's important for us to take pride in, in what we wear and the way we look, not to be over the top and not to focus on that only, but our, our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. And of course now, time for homework. Follow okay, up. here okay. we go. First is, of course, read daily the Magnificat or the Word Among Us or the Breviary. Uh, number two, of course, Teresa's book, which we referred to, Walk Softly and Carry a Great Bag, available at the Religious Catalog here at EWTN. Advice number three, homework. Turn off the TV and computer and just pray and listen to the Lord for just 15 minutes, and gradually you will see the time increasing, increasing naturally. And, of course, the fourth thing, visit the CatholicViewForWomen.com website, see our discussion questions, sign up for a monthly e-letter, like us on Facebook, and then finally, let's not forget our holy reminder, our patroness of this series, our Kitchen Madonna, available also 
at the religious catalog and of course I have them in my home, her in my home, and Astrid and Teresa, we mm -hmm. all have it. And I've always always mentioned how guests who come to my house, friends, they all remark about this statue, and it does keep the conversation That's another way holy. of carrying God in your pocket and, right. and focusing, having these wonderful religious items and images around your home. That's right. Well, thanks for tuning in to The Catholic View for Women. For Astrid Janet, I'm Teresa Tamio, And don't forget to visit us again on our website for all the information, great resources, and some great questions to help you carry God in your pocket. We'll see you next time on The Catholic View for Women. Our website, thecatholicviewforwomen.com, of course. See you soon.